So a couple of things today. The first one I want to show you is I got round to weathering, repairing and cleaning up everything to get it running. Uh, the very plasticky looking but no less very charming and just really nice 1970s Lima HO scale class 33. The only major thing that was needed for it was new buffers, which I fitted on the front and the back. I needed brushes also for the motor, and it runs fine now. And I can get it down to quite a respectable crawl, due to mainly the two magnets on the motor, the two extra neodyme magnets put on the outside of the motor to compensate for 40 or 50 years of magnetism loss. I'll just zoom in a bit to show you how I did the weathering. I got Army Painter paints and running them over the existing blue air and yellow areas, I got a darker tone, so a darker tone of blue on the blue areas, on the British Rail Corporate blue to highlight the details using as I was doing that using a cotton bud to remove the paint from the numbers and the logo and the same thing with the yellow sections at the front and back or boat ends a darker yellow boat army painter speed paints so it retains the original color but adds a new dimension of depth to it. it just takes away the plasticky look basically let's see if we can see i did a light dry brushing on the roof with just white acrylic paint and was vallejo so i'm very happy how this guy came out you can see it's you know it comes to life i've got some carriages now to go with this and i'll run them in the next video i'll do a proper update on the ho stuff that i've been working on the british ho stuff but uh very happy what it's a wonderful model and it really does show the potential for HO for British prototypes that was ne sadly never resolved. Very silent runner, very silent runner. The second thing I want to show you today, I'm very excited about, is I'll put it on this track. Well, I can't put it on this track, and I'll tell you why in a minute. I finally got my hands on another Russian prototype. A HO scale. It appears to be a ice wagon, a refrigerator wagon, very similar to the American style where they drop ice into either end and it cools the produce in here, often meat. It's uh, very similar to an American old time wagon, but it's not, it's different at the same time too. You'll find that again, I got this very inexpensively. Now you saw the other wagon I got, the other Russian prototype wagon I got, the stock car. Now. This, again, there's no makes uh, list on either one. This one's much better quality-wise because it has the uh, better detailing, the sliding door. You can see the stockyard inside, lots of good graphics. I put him on the track. He's a bit, he, the wheels are a bit off um, gauge. I've fixed them. They're not wide gauge. We're brushing their HO standard 16.5 millimeter. But there they go. Actually, I can see what's wrong there. There's something... There's something caught in it. We'll look at that later. Piece of string or something. But there's the model there. Now it's not it's not very well detailed. It's very um, basic. The lettering is pretty frugal, I might add. But it's otherwise it's fairly detailed. And the re a good thing now is I want to go get my hand at scratch building some Russian stock. I looked at some Russian stock online, and it, it's spectacularly expensive but now i have these two guys i can use them to work out the the loading gauges and heights of russian models and i'm i'm determined to get myself a, a russian train set a freight set at least and so 
Number two in my Russian collection.